from Loretto Abbey, home to the Sisters of Loretto since 1928, and the Loretto Abbey Secondary School, and with the kind cooperation of the Toronto Catholic District School Board, the National Catholic Broadcasting Council presents Daily Mass. The televising of this Mass is made possible by a contribution from an anonymous donor from Ottawa. This Mass is offered in thanksgiving for blessings received, for the living and deceased members of her family and friends, and for special intentions. The televised Mass brings a great deal of meaning to thousands of people all across our country. They join with me in thanking you for this gift. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, amen. amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, and the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Amen. Today we commemorate the Queenship of the Blessed Virgin Mary. Let us now acknowledge our sins and so prepare ourselves to celebrate the sacred mysteries. You were sent to heal the contrite of heart, Lord have mercy. You came to call sinners, Christ have, mercy. Christ have mercy. You are seated at the right hand of the Father to intercede for us, Lord have mercy. Lord have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Let us pray. O God, who made the mother of your son to be our mother and our queen, graciously grant us sustained by her intercession we may attain in the heavenly kingdom the glory promised to your children. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. A reading from the book of Ruth. Naomi had a kinsman on her husband's side, a prominent rich man of the family of Elimelech, whose name was Boaz. And Ruth the Moabite said to Naomi, let me go to the field and glean among the ears of grain behind someone in whose sight I may find favor. She said to her, go my daughter. So she went. She came and gleaned in the field behind the reapers. As it happened, she came to the part of the field belonging to Boaz who was of the family of Elimelech. Then Boaz said to Ruth, Now listen, my daughter, do not go to glean in another field or leave this one, but keep close to my young women. Keep your eyes on the field that is being reaped and follow behind them. I have ordered the young men not to bother you. If you get thirsty, Go to the vessels and drink from what the, the young men have drawn. Then she fell prostrate with her face to the ground and said to him, Why have I found favor in your sight that you should take notice of me when I am a foreigner? But Boaz answered her, all that you have done for your mother-in-law since the death of your husband has been fully told me, and how you left your father and mother and your native land and came to a people that you did not know before. So Boaz took Ruth, and she became his wife. When they came together, the Lord made her conceive and she bore a son. Then the women said to Naomi, Blessed be the Lord, who has not left you this day without next of kin, and may his name be re renowned in Israel. He shall be to you a restorer of life and a nourisher of your old age. For your daughter-in-law, who loves you, who is more to you than seven sons, has borne him. Then Naomi took the child and laid him in her bosom and became his nurse. 
The women, took, the women of the neighborhood gave him a name, saying, a son has been born to Naomi. They named him Obed. He became the father of Jesse, the father of David. The word of the Lord. The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. Jesus said to the crowds and to his disciples, the scribes and the Pharisees sit in Moses' chair, therefore do whatever they teach you and follow it, but do not do as they do, for they do not practice what they teach. They tie up heavy burdens hard to bear and lay them on the shoulders of others but they themselves are unwilling to lift a finger to move them. They do all their deeds to be seen by others, for they make their phylacteries broad and their fringes long. They love to have the place of honor at banquets and the best seats in the synagogues, and to be greeted with respect in the marketplaces and to have people call them rabbi. But you are not to be called rabbi, for you have one teacher. You are all students. And call no one your father on earth, for you have one father, the one in heaven. Nor are you to be called instructors, for you have one instructor, the Messiah. The greatest among you will be your servant. All who exalt themselves will be humbled, and all who humble themselves will be exalted. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise you. 
The first reading yesterday and again today is from one of the shortest and most attractive books of the Hebrew Bible, the book of Ruth. Unlike Joshua and Judges, from which we've been reading recently, it focuses not on the people of Israel as a whole, but on a single family. One of the central characters in the story is an Israelite woman named Naomi. Having moved with her husband and two sons to a neighboring country, she loses all three of them to death. When she decides to return to Israel, one of her daughters-in-law, a young Moabite woman named Ruth, insists on accompanying her. Where you go, she says, I will go. Where you lodge, I will lodge. Your people shall be my people, and your God, my God. In today's reading, we hear how Ruth's fidelity is rewarded. She is taken in by a close relative of Naomi named Boaz. He marries her, and with her has a child named Obed. He is destined to be the father of Jesse, the father of David. In the context of ancient Israel, the story of Ruth underlines in a very human way that fidelity to and acceptance by the God of Israel is possible for non-Israelites. Although a foreigner, Ruth became the great-grandmother of the most loved of Israel's kings. It is as such that she is included in the genealogy of Jesus in the Gospel of Matthew. The details of the story of Ruth reflect the culture of the time, including the precarious position of widows, whether young or old. They depended on the kindness of relatives for support. A little over a week ago, I presided at the funeral mass for my brother. He died suddenly of a massive heart attack, as his and my father did almost 50 years ago. A sudden death like that can be an enormous shock for those who survive, especially for the spouse. Peter, my brother's name, had a loving and supportive family, a family to which he was very much committed and by which he was greatly enriched. He and his wife had two sons, both of whom are married with children. The family came together in a wonderful way as they helped one another to deal with their shock and their loss. The story of Ruth reminds us that family is a crucial dimension of human life, one that has a great deal to do with how happy and positive our lives turn out to be. We are all born into families and are deeply influenced by them. It is there that we first experience love and learn or fail to learn to trust others, to open ourselves to them, to become loving persons. Family life is not always easy. No family is perfect, nor is there just one pattern or model of what a family should be. Different cultures have different traditions, different forms of family life. Whatever the particular pattern of the family into which we were born, it had a profound effect on us. In it, we learned many of the values that mark us as adults. If this is true in the development of our moral and psychological identities, it also is true in regard to religion. It is in the family that many of us as children first heard about God and Jesus, first took part in religious rituals, and learned to pray. In our family, as I was growing up, we had the tradition of praying the rosary after the evening meal. I will never forget how touched I was, even as a child, watching and listening to my father as he prayed. He was a man of deep and deeply felt faith. The story of Naomi and Ruth invites us to see the family and its complex and not always happy or positive history as a privileged place for our encounter 
with God. The phrase, the family as the domestic church, a phrase that found its way into the documents of the Second Vatican Council, is evocative in this regard. The church is a community of faith, a reconciled and reconciling community, a community in which the healing, life-giving power of Christ and his spirit is at work. To say that the family is the domestic church is to say that all the great spiritual realities that are at the heart of the church are meant to be present and active in it. Things like forgiveness and reconciliation, love and trust, faith and fidelity. We are all called to be sacraments of God and Christ to one another. Nowhere can we do this more effectively than in the family. The love and trust, the understanding and sensitivity we bring to our relations with one another open us to the gracious presence of God in our life and in the life of our families. Let us now in faith and trust present before God our needs. For all of us that are sharing in this Eucharist will make us more sensitive to one another and especially to members of our family. Let us pray to the Lord. For the intentions of our donors and of all those who have written or phoned in asking for our prayers, let us pray to the Lord. For families all across our country, and especially those struggling with difficulties at this time, let us pray to the Lord. For a greater sense among political leaders in this country and elsewhere of their and our responsibility for the environment, let us pray to the Lord. For those who have died recently, especially victims of war, terror, and natural disaster, let us pray to the Lord. Gracious God, we ask you to hear and grant these prayers as well as the more personal ones that each one of us has in his or her own heart. All this we pray through Christ our Lord. Amen. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the bread we offer you. Fruit of the earth and work of human hands, it will become for us the bread of life. Yes. By the mingling of this water, we become partakers of our humanity. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the wine we offer you. Fruit of the vine and work of human hands, it will become our spiritual drink. Wash me from my sins, cleanse me. Pray, brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be made acceptable to God, the Father Almighty. As we observe this memorial of the Blessed Virgin Mary, we bring you our offerings, O Lord, praying to be given strength by the humanity of Christ who offered himself to you on the cross as the unblemished oblation who lives and reigns forever and ever. Amen. The Lord be with you. Amen. Lift up your hearts. Amen. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. Amen. It is truly right and just our duty and our salvation to praise your mighty deeds and the exaltation of all the saints, and especially as we celebrate the memory of the Blessed Virgin Mary, to proclaim your kindness as we echo her thankful hymn of praise. For truly, even to earth's ends, you have done great things and extended your abundant mercy from age to age. 
When you looked on the lowliness of your handmaid, you gave us through her the author of our salvation, your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. Through him, the host of angels adores your majesty and rejoices in your presence forever. May our voices, we pray, join with theirs in one chorus of exultant praise as we acclaim. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dew fall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and, giving thanks, broke it, gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice and once more, giving thanks, gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Father, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly, we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Lord, remember your church spread throughout the world. Bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis, our Pope, and Thomas, our Bishop, and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, the Blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the Blessed Apostles, and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. the Savior's command, informed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us, and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. 
Lord Jesus Christ, you said to your apostles, peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not upon our sins, but upon the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. May the peace of the Lord be with you always. Amen. Let us offer each other the sign of peace. Behold the Lamb of God, behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word and my soul shall be healed. With those of you at home, join with me now in this prayer for humility. Dear Lord, let me have too deep a sense of humor ever to be proud. Let me know my absurdity before I act absurdly. Let me realize that when I am humble, I am most human, most truthful, and most worthy of your serious consideration. Amen. Let us pray. Having received this heavenly sacrament, we humbly pray, O Lord, that we who reverently celebrate the memorial of the Blessed Virgin Mary may merit to be partakers at your eternal banquet. Through Christ, our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. Amen. May Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go in peace. Our thanks to our donor for the gift of this Mass. On behalf of Father Bush, Father Coots, Father Fitzpatrick, Father Donovan, Father Lynch, and all of us here at Daily Mass, our best wishes for a restful weekend, and we'll be looking for you all again on Monday.